Hey, what's up, people? I had actually started playing Rise of the Tomb Raider, and I, I figured that maybe I should do the first one on the channel first before just jumping into the middle of the trilogy. Uh, so here I am starting another game that I've already played before in the middle of having not finished like 15 other games. And 15 is actually hyperbole on the low side because it's more probably like, um, I'd say 70. And those are games that I'm still pretending that I'm actively playing. So uh, let's do this. Rise of the, I mean, Tomb Raider 2013. I'm going to put it on normal because I don't, I mean, <sighs> whatever, I'll put it on hard. A famous <laughs> explorer once said. Um, I'm not sure what the deal is with this, like, insane, like, you see this stuttering? To make my mark, to find adventure, but instead, adventure found. Me. This is on the Series X, so why it can't run a literally 11 year old game cutscene, not even the game itself, the cutscenes is beyond me. In our darkest moments, when life flashes before us. <coughs> We find something. Something that keeps us going. Something that pushes us. I'm um, positive that the original game didn't have this issue, so I, it might be an NVIDIA issue. I don't know what the deal was. I don't have my 360 to judge against. My neighbor has it. I feel like a lot of cut schemes, cut schemes, uh, cut scenes got skipped or something. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, see, like the game's running fine. So why was the cutscene at the beginning running? It wasn't even running. It was like miming. It's time slipping so poorly. It's crazy. Oh, I'm not used to playing this game on console, so um, on the PC, the, the hair work settings would always make like crazy shit happen with her hair. Oh, my God. 
Tomb Raider, or as I like to call it, Lara Croft Abuse Simulator. I just remember that it was on hard. So this probably won't be fun. Uh, judging by, by what I know from Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Rise of the Tomb Raider. But... <laughs> My instinct to not put it on hard was probably was loud. correct. Yeah. So you can't crouch in the, in the first game either? Now the entire cave is going to collapse, right? Let's see if I die here from the QTE timing. Probably not a good game to play if I want to keep my newest controller in good condition. But uh, whatever. It is what it is. Movement seems so awkward, like all the camera movements. Oh, okay, you're supposed to. I got you.
I don't know, this, uh, this camera angle is giving me grief compared to the later games. Their camera is nowhere near this annoying. Objects thrown at you and oh shit, <laughs> not be affected. Oh, I don't think you can run. I think it's just there's like one move speed. time, dude. I forgot, um, I shouldn't have forgotten either because I recently made a video about this, but I, I don't think I ever actually uploaded it. Um, the first sequence in this game that I just went through is literally the worst dog shit AAA designed by checklist crap I have ever seen in over 35 years of gaming. Um, and I try to be nice about it, but it, I can't, it's horrible. Uh, especially that very first Y button prompt when you have to kick the guy in the face. There is no indication whatsoever what the proper button timing is. So, like, if you compare it to every other game in the franchise, and any other game, really, that has button prompts like that on screen, you're not supposed to press the button until it actually, like, the inner circle is on top of the circle with the letter in it. But that's not the case. You're supposed to press the fucking button as soon as the, like, middle circle... As, as soon as the outer ring gets into the middle ring, you're supposed to press it. So I died, like, 11 times just trying to kick the guy in the face. And I think I, like, broke the... the input car connection, because it seems like there's input latency now. Even if only a little bit. Don't worry, if you thought I was just going to play the game and enjoy it, that's not what's going to happen. I'm going to tear this game apart as it deserves. A lifeboat. Where are they? They must have gone inland. Um, I haven't... Not that you've seen anything at this point, but... I haven't really criticized very much in the rise of the Tomb Raider playlist because they fixed a lot of the really, you know, ridiculous issues with this game. This is like some, uh, six axis bullshit that shouldn't be in the game. Especially on the, the Xbox port or the Xbox version. Okay. 
She's just fine walking around with a piece of rebar sticking through her her whatever. This part is, is cool. I mean, it's not like amazing, but it's just funny because it reminds me of Lost, and it's kind of cool. I think that's the first of at least two planes on the island. Of the Yamatai or whatever it's actually called. I guess there aren't any resources. I don't know why I keep looking around. Not until you learn about resources. You're not supposed to. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's about to be like, uh, sir, I pressed X. Do I have to kill these wolves? I think I do. Isn't this supposed to be like the remastered definitive version or something? Yet it still has these outdated, jagged polygons. It's fine. Whatever. Is anyone listening? Please respond. Got your one match trope there, of course. The funniest thing about this trilogy, being that it's supposed to be, you know, it's it's dubbed the Survivor trilogy, like her origin story. You would think after one game you would learn better. Especially in the second game, and I think I said that in the video, so I won't go too far into it. But you think you would be prepared after this has happened once already, much less twice. Oh, this is where they, where the the cuts the cut skeins come into play. Here's the soon-to-be world-famous archaeologist, Lara Croft, in her native habitat. She's on the hunt for the lost kingdom of Yamatai, home to the fabulous Himiko, mythical sun queen, and ancestor of yours truly. <laughs> Sam, this is serious. Oh, sweetie, I know. 
I'm just trying to lighten the mood here. Everyone's so on edge. What are you so worried about? I'm close to something. I'm sure of it. I just don't know if the others will listen. Or even if they should. Lara, you know this stuff better than anyone. Seriously. I'm not just saying this to make you feel better. I trust you. Roth trusts you. You got this. Now let's take a break, okay? Okay. Okay. And Sam, thanks. She's not always this serious, you know? Come on, tackle him! No, no, it's your chance! How can you suggest I'm not serious about this expedition, Laura? But it's not just Sam's family funding us. I put my savings on the line, too. We've all got some kind of stake in this. The funding won't last forever, Whitman. That's precisely why we should push east, not west. Oh, no one oh, believes Yamata... No one believes Yamata is that far east. The books simply don't support it. Well, whoever wrote those books... ...books never found Yamata. I've talked to Roth about this. There's no point in following in other people's footsteps, Dr. Whitman. I refuse to bet my reputation on your hunch. I a TV crew behind you. Got 30 years experience, two PhDs, one in East wow. Asian history. So why don't you just stick to boats, Mr. Grimm? Ship, Dr. Whitman. It's a ship. You don't need a PhD to know that. Going east will take us directly into the Dragon's Triangle. That's where we need to go. <sighs> Lara, my little bird. I'd follow you almost anywhere, but that place has a bad energy. Bad storms, more like, makes the Bermuda Triangle look like Disney World. <laughs> Sign me up. The stories about Queen Himiko say she could summon storms. Myths are usually based on some version of the truth. What if Yamatai was somewhere in the triangle itself? Well, look, this is the satellite imagery from inside the Dragon's Triangle. That doesn't look good. If it's wet, I can sail on it. Oh, don't tell me you're seriously you know, concerned. Reyes is right. We don't have the funds to piss about. It's now or never. Lara's offering fresh ideas and a plan. I'm the captain here. It's my decision. We're going into the Dragon's Triangle. Why am I even here? So apparently this is like just an Xbox. I don't know about Series S. I haven't tested it. I can't just. Say but for sure, like tons of games on Series X have this stuttering issue during cutscenes and only during cutscenes. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to do about it. The first time I've ever seen it. Uh, granted, I haven't played a whole ton of games on Xbox this generation. Oh, God. What's going on here? Wait. But it's not, it's not every game. It seems to be a lot of games, but not every game. That's what I mean. Get this guy down. Can't hunt with my bare hands. I need to find a weapon. I could do this. If this thing still works. Just remember Roth's training. You can have the best bombing technique in the world, but it won't mean a thing if you can't focus. It... It happened again. Private Koske. He was on gate duty.
shitty hunting from the original is in Rise of the Tomb Raider. I, just, I love how she like screams and impales the shit out of a uh, animal every time she has to cut it in these games. Conrad Roth, Captain of the Endurance. We are shipwrecked on an island inside the Dragon's Triangle. Roth? Lara? You're alive! Easy, easy. Are you okay? What happened? I remember the beach, and then it went black, and I woke up in a cave. There was this crazy man, Roth, and a dead body. Oh, God. Where are you now, Lara? Are you safe? It was so horrible. It's all my fault. This is all my fault. Lara, listen to me. <laughs> I sent an SOS from the Endurance before I abandoned her. Hopefully someone caught it. I've spoken to the others. We're regrouping at my location. Please come and get me. I have to stay here. You can do this, Lara. Remember when we climbed Snowden? You said the key was knowing that all you've got to do is just keep, keep moving. moving. Remember everything I've taught you, Lara. You're ready for this. And keep your radio on. Okay. Music. Hello? Hello? Is someone there? these markings. <sighs> what am I doing? <sighs> oh God, this is insane. Yeah, I remember the uh, sun goddess singing thing being a little bit creepy. I think it might actually just be a record player, though. There are traces of white paint on the inside. Whoever used this mask was of noble birth. Oh, no. 
Oh, it's a flash. <laughs> Parts of, I don't know, people. It's a little bit macabre. You get your first crappy little axe. Yay. Oh, yeah, it is a phonograph. like a beware wolves sign. Is this the same same way you came in or is this different? Ah, uh, this is like up in the mountain somewhere. make anyone a little jumpy we just spoke to your crew they're on their way look he bandaged my foot i think that dude oh, might be full of the shit least i could do my manners i'm sorry i'm matthias a teacher by trade not really cut out for island life i'm afraid <laughs> His voice acting is so ridiculous. Yeah. It's like Deckard Cain Diablo one era of voice acting. Right, Himiko. Can you tell me more? I'm intrigued. Himiko well, and I believe it or Himiko. not, a couple thousand years ago, Queen Himiko pretty much ran things in Japan. <sighs> she loves telling this story. Himiko was beautiful, enigmatic, but also ruthless and powerful. Legend says. She had shamanistic powers. And this is where she loses me. Well, there's always some truth to miss. She commanded an army of samurai warriors, her magnificent storm guard. They rode the very winds into battle, laying waste to all who opposed them. They say the sun rose at Himiko's command, and she ruled everything its rays touched, from the mountains to the sea and beyond. <sighs> but what happened to her? It's so considerate of the game to idle out during cutscenes. It's funny because Resident Evil Revelations had this exact same 